Which slicer is the best? Is it Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio or maybe even Prusa Slicer? As is often the case, the answer is it depends. So here's a list of exclusive features missing in at least one of them. This list is by no means exhaustive. These are the differences I noticed while creating my latest course about slicing from beginner to expert. Link in the description. Mouse ears are a great way to increase the bad adhesion of your print without covering everything in a hard to remove brim. The technique itself isn't new, but it has become way more user friendly. A few years ago, the only way to place them was to add a part to your model, set its height to your first layer height and then resize and place it accordingly. This still works today and in fact it's still the only viable way for Prusa Slicer to add mouse ears. Bamboo Studio introduced a simple to use mouse ears tool where you can place them anywhere you want with one click. You can choose the size individually for each one. It also has a few options with which you can automatically place the mouse ears and then only do adjustments where you deem necessary. Now for quite a while I thought this was a Bamboo Studio exclusive feature solely because by default its icon is only visible in Bamboo Studio. In reality it's part of Orca Slicer as well. But here you first have to set the brim type to paint it in order for the icon to appear. I could have taken the hint from Bamboo that you need to set the brim type to paint it for it to work, but it went completely over my head. Now I know and so do you. Hopefully Prusa will adapt this tool in the future as well. All three slicers can paint supports, seams and filament colors. Prusa can't paint mouse ears yet, but it can paint fuzzy skin. As of making this video, it's the only one of the bunch. If you don't know what fuzzy skin is, it basically makes the print's outer walls wobbly and edgy by zigzagging them around a bit. The result is a distinct look that also makes the fuzzy areas grippier, so it's ideal for all sorts of handles and touching points of your model. Fuzzy skin itself is present in all of them, but in Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio, you can only select between the outer contour, contour and holes, and all walls. You can cheat your way around this by using modifiers, as I explain in my course, but that's a huge pain and nothing beats painting them on. You can easily select only those areas where you really want the fuzzy texture while leaving out everything else entirely. Very handy for practical designs like my hex nut or bolt star handle I've used in so many projects already. Although the cooling of overhangs is fundamentally the same for all three slicers, there's a bit of a difference in how much you can influence it. In Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio, you can only set one single value at which a perimeter is considered an overhang, resulting in the given overhang speed. While you usually want to cool overhangs as much as possible to get a clean result, just going full speed might be too much for some materials. In some situations it's helpful to have more granular options for different percentages of overlap. In Prusa Slicer you can set the fan speed for 25% increments. By default this option is switched off entirely, but in situations where you need it you know where you can find it. It's also worth noting that the values in Prusa Slicer are exactly the opposite from Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio. 0% in Prusa means a bridge with no contact to the layer below. While for the other two, that value defines how much of a perimeter is floating freely, so 100% is a bridge. Keep that in mind when playing around with those values. While we're talking about cooling settings, there's also another Prusa exclusive feature I really like. It gives you a plain text explanation of how the printer behaves with the cooling options you've set. It's easy to get confused by all the options, especially when some of them have cross influences on others. Being able to read the result in plain English is a refreshing change. Print speed and temperature heavily influence not only the strength of a part, but also its appearance. While large areas can be printed at full speed, more delicate sections need enough time to cool down before the next layer can be put on top. By default, the slicer will first spin up the cooling fans to maximum speed, and if this still isn't enough cooling, it will artificially slow down the printhead's movement. This can cause variations in the outer texture of the print, especially if your printer is pushing the limits of your hot end in terms of speed. Most materials develop a glossy texture when they are thoroughly heated while printing. Faster extrusion means the material has less time to heat up and doesn't reach the full hot end temperature anymore. The result is a finish that becomes more and more matte. At some point you might even get small blobs of material where the core didn't melt at all. But I digress. 
To keep the other texture consistent for the whole print, even on small sections, the option Don't slow down outer walls comes in handy. The result highly depends on your material, of course. Matte textured filaments might not change their appearance at all, so keep this in mind when using the option. Another thing to be aware of are overhangs. The outermost wall is always the one with the least contact area to the layer below. Printing them slowly is often mandatory to get a good result with no deformations. On models with steep overhangs, this option might end up in overall worse quality than before. Instead of varying outer textures, you will get soggy overhangs and curling, so use it with caution. This one is probably rather niche for most of you. It's not totally abstract though, it can be very practical and I'm also showing a real use case in my video on how to remove imprinted logos from existing STLs in the slicer. The order goes as follows. Orca slicer only supports world coordinates. At least I couldn't find a way to change it, the dialog is read only and there's no drop down menu. Bamboo Studio supports world and object coordinates. While Prusa slicer supports all three, world, object and part coordinates. Let me show you the difference between those three and why they matter. World coordinates simply represent the three axes of the printer in relation to the print bed. Nothing fancy and that's usually all you need if you're just moving around some part on a print bed. Notice that the used coordinate system is indicated by the boundary edges shown when an object or part is selected and the orientation of the three axes when the move tool is active. Sometimes you might want to add an additional part to your model be it to add or remove geometry, to place a modifier or even old school support enforcers or blockers. Now imagine you've already rotated your main part in any direction, for example to make it fit onto the print bed. Suddenly making small corrections in positioning relative to the original part becomes a major pain using world coordinates. With object coordinates you can move the part around in relation to the orientation of the whole object. One of those three objects is called a part. Together they form an object. The next step begins when you want to individually rotate parts in relation to each other. Only Prusa Slicer enables you to move parts using their individual coordinate system. This can be very helpful if you already aligned that additional part with a base part. Especially if your base part is not just a simple rectangle. You might want to move it just a little bit closer below the surface of the original part but the object coordinates don't directly point into that direction. As mentioned, a rather rare use case, but trust me, if you encounter a situation like that, you're very grateful for those extra options Prusa Slicer has to offer. When starting the printer's part cooling fan, it takes a moment to get it up to speed. Usually this is not a big deal if you print a large area, like the bridging layer below the solid top layers for example. But on some models you might have a lot of small bridges where the printer only takes a few seconds for each while it prints other features in between. In this case it might take the printer more time to spin up the fan than the actual feature takes to print, especially on very fast printers. That's also probably the reason why this feature emerged in Bamboo Studio since their printers have been setting a strong benchmark for fast printers for a while now. They also use rather large fans even for their smallest models which naturally take more time to spin up compared to the tiny 30mm fans of my Voron 0.2 for example. A single large fan produces considerably more airflow than multiple smaller ones. Interestingly, this setting is not yet used at least for my A1 Mini. They also don't list it in their wiki, it's not even present in the screenshots there. Maybe they'll use it in the future, let's see. In the meantime you can customize it on your own if you feel your bridges need improvement. You've watched countless hours already but still feel like you're searching for a needle in a haystack, check out my courses about 3D design and printing. You'll learn everything from the ground up with no prior experience necessary. Lots of practical, real-world examples help you to save time and money. Or if you just want to build something cool, check out my DIY projects like Gatuino, the automatic cat laser toy. Don't need anything but still want to say thanks, there's a donation link in the description as well. Your support helps me to keep this channel unbiased and independent from third-party sponsors. Another minor thing I noticed is the default wall generator. 
This is not an exclusive feature, but rather a configuration choice by the developers or rather printer manufacturers. I noticed that Bamboo, at least for my A1 Mini, uses the standard wall generator by default, while other configurations usually default to Arachne. The quick explanation of what it does is, instead of printing narrow infill to fill gaps, it expands the width of other perimeters to span the gap. This leads to less printer movement and also a bit more strength since fewer wide perimeters tend to be stronger than narrow ones. It's also not slicer exclusive since both Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer behave that way. All non-Bamboo profiles I checked default to Arachne. There's also no issue using Arachne since I usually change it when I print with my Bamboo machine. Interestingly enough, Bamboo even claimed to have switched to Arachne at some point in an official article on their website yet in my up-to-date profiles they didn't. Since Arachne also has some weak spots, they might have ran into issues and reverted that decision. In any case, you can choose freely and use whichever suits the model you're printing best. So there you have it. Those are the most significant differences I noticed between the three Slicer siblings. Let me know what I missed in the comments below and leave a like if you found this video helpful. See you in the next one.